Now let's talk about some other things that happen with the sun. And actually, things that happen um, on the in the atmosphere of the sun. So basically above the photosphere. Photosphere, remember, that is the layer that we see as the surface of the sun. So basically the visible layer of the sun. All right. Okay. So here's what happens. Uh, there are lot of, lots of things that are caused by the rotation pattern of the sun and the convection, and they cause a lot of activity. And uh, it's basically motion, I guess, that is going to stretch and twist the sun's magnetic field. Every time there are charges moving, they produce magnetic fields. And the sun rotates fairly fast, and so sun's magnetic field is pretty strong. And as a uh, consequence of that fact, then um, there are all kinds of things that happen on the surface uh, of the sun. There are sunspots, solar prominences. Uh, this is actually the cause for why the chromosphere and the corona are so hot, right? Hotter than uh, the interior layer of photosphere. Okay, and then solar flares, and they're all related to magnetic fields. And uh, as you can see in this image, uh, this is one of those bursts of x-rays and solar winds, especially when, when this kind of disconnects, they're going to send charged particles uh, towards the Earth, and that affects things um, on the surface of the Earth, in the atmosphere of the Earth. We're going to talk about that. All right, so one of the most important activity and most ubiquitous activity are uh, the sunspots, the freckles. on the face of the sun. All right, so what are those? It's actually, uh, they're still the same plasma. It's moving around thanks to the conduction, convection cells just underneath what we see. But they're just regions that are cooler than other parts of the surface is sun. So here the temperature is about 4000, maybe 45,000 Kelvin, but if you remember here the temperature is about 6000, well 5600 to 5900 Kelvin. So you see differences differences of a few hundreds of Kelvin, okay? And uh, that kind of, if you remember, right, they're going to, so lower temperature, remember that Vn low says, you're going to see the peak intensity, it's going to be at longer wavelengths, right? So if this is reddish, then lower temperature it's going to be basically closer to infrared. That's why it's going to look blackish, right? So the reddish, that's for the higher temperature. 
All right. Another interesting thing about the sunspots. Um, so what actually what produces them? Uh, strong magnetic fields. Okay, and they often come in pairs, and they have polarities. They have a north south. So actually, like this one, this is a very close pair of sunspots. Okay, um, a few words about the magnetic field. So this is magnetic field lines. Okay, when they're closer together, then they are stronger. And when they are further apart, weaker. And so the magnetic interaction is going to be weaker when the magnetic field is weaker. And so the interaction is, um, so there is a, a, a polarity going south-north, but the thing is the charged particles, say in this case electrons, they are going to spiral along the magnetic fields, right? And these are, you know, the particles in solar plasma, okay? Electrons or positrons they're still going to spiral around the magnetic fields, but they are going to spiral in the opposite direction thanks to their uh, positive charges. All right, so the magnetic fields do, right? So here, the magnetic fields kind of behave like that, right? So they're stronger. When they're closer together and weaker here and when it's weaker magnetic field then charges particles will charge with charges are not trapped by it it the magnetic Field. Okay, so they can move, can move more freely. Well, here particles are dropped. So they don't move that fast, right? So we have lower kinetic energy, that means lower temperature. Right, so that's what happens. This is how those sunspots are created. Right, it's all in how the magnetic field traps less or more the plasma, the charged particles that make up the plasma, uh, which makes up the sun. All right. Okay. So here are the some examples of the temperatures in a in a sunspot. So as I said, a few hundreds of degrees uh, lower than uh, what you see otherwise. Okay, and remember the convection cells, right? And if you kind of go like this, the core will be here. Okay, another um, type of activity are the uh, solar flares, also called biomagnetic activity, and these solar flares are going to send bursts of x-rays and charged particles into space when that magnetic field, those magnetic field lines break, okay? So uh, um, whenever the solar flare phenomenon happens, then there is going to be a lot of energy transmitted to the uh, corona of the 
sun. Remember, one of those layers, right? And uh, this is basically the explanation as to why that corona is so hot. It's all because the energy gets trapped by the magnetic connection or reconnection in between the sunspots and then it is suddenly released into the corona. So here's the sun and this is uh, an image with a coronographer, right? So what you see around here, right? It's basically the solar corona. And that is very difficult to see normally. And uh, uh, solar eclipses offer the best opportunity to observe the corona. So now with the coronographer in this image, uh, the solar eclipse phenomenon is basically simulated. Okay, another uh, thing that happens at the surface of the sun are the coronal mass ejections, right? So uh, here we have bursts of energetic par charged particles that um, come out um, a lot. Um, they're so powerful that they, they go through the whole solar system. So they basically they reach the Earth in just a couple of days and they create the so-called geomagnetic storm. And one example of those are the northern lines, light, lights, right, or the auroras. So that's exactly what happens. You have charged particles around the magnetic field lines, the Earth's magnetic field, okay? And the charged particles, when they're accelerated, when they spiral around those magnetic fields, they emit electromagnetic radiation or light. So there you have it. Now you have the auroras or the northern line lights explained. Of course, if you get a chance to go visit one of the northern European countries or uh, somewhere in Alaska, maybe you get the chance to travel if you do it while um, these phenomena happen. Uh, definitely a beautiful, beautiful thing to, to witness. Okay, a few words about how many of those sunspots live on the surface of the sun and for how long. Well, here is basically the percentage of the sun's uh, surface covered by the sunspots. So that goes like basically number, the total number of sun spots now we have here is a function of time right so in case you can um, you, you can probably immediately tell that there is a uh, periodicity okay there is a cycle and it's about 11 years so you can 11 years so there are some like minimum there are minima and maxima. So at some, in some years, there are a lot more sunspots than in others. For example, um, 2020, um, it's very close to a minimum. It's like we're here, right? And then it's gonna go up. So not much solar activity nowadays. So even if we were on campus and I had a, a chance to have you look at the sun through a safe solar telescope, we probably wouldn't see many freckles on the face of the sun. Uh, now, uh, the lower panel shows the location, right? So what do we have? The location of the sunspots. This is the equator of the sun, and you see they have some sort of butterfly 
shape. Why do they, why are they arranged like that? It had to with the um, polarity of the magnetic field of the sun, okay? And it turns out that the sunspot cycle has something to also to do with the winding and twisting of, of the sun's magnetic field because the sun itself spins around it, uh, its axis and remember it takes around 30 days for a full rotation around its axis but it turns out there is a differential rotation right so not all of the places on the surface of the sun uh, rotate with at the same rate so I think it was something like uh, 23 to 30 days so it was quite a, a range and so that is going to twist the magnetic field lines and they are going to loop look at those okay and that is going to create even more activity on the Sun's surface but those loops are going to break and uh, actually sometimes the polarity also switches so whatever was south becomes north and that cycle appears to be related to the 11, 11 year cycle or in the uh, sunspot year cycle of sunspot activity All right. Um, another important thing, yes, there is solar weather. There are all kinds of changes. However, the average total energy output is pretty much constant and it has been like this, constant for about 5 billion years and it will be the same. for the next five billion years. So basically, this is not going to account, I mean, we've done calculations, people study these things, so uh, does not account for a global warming. measurements okay so the, the sun does not uh, have actually anything to do with what we did to our earth in case you have heard some other people uh, talking about you know changes in the sun that could cause uh, changes in how warm the atmosphere of our own planet is